Are you feeling a little bit peckish? Are you hungry for more cool two-player card games? Then do I have two really good games for you. It is Arboretum and Songbirds, and in this video we're going to see which of these two games is better. Let's go! Looks like I've got a full house. Well, I'm playing a straight flush. Take that. Arboretum is a game that is far from being green. In fact, it may have plays seeing red. Throughout the game, players will be expanding their arboretums like some high-tech farming simulator by placing different species of trees in rows and columns. Players are aiming to create pathways of at least four trees in length between their lowest valley tree ascending to their highest valley tree of the same connecting species. Pathways of trees can be made up of different species as long as the starting and ending tree species are the same. Pathways made up of mixed species score one victory point per card. Pathways made of the same species doubles the victory point of the path. Pathways that begin at one score one extra point, and if it ends with an eight, it scores that player two victory points for that pathway. There is a catch to all of this, however. Players will only get to score the pathways of their tree species if they have the highest value suit of that tree in their hand at the end of the game. If they don't, they score nothing. This is definitely not a game where players will bear the fruits of their labour. If a player scores a pathway with an 8 and another player has a 1 of the same species, the 1 trumps the 8, allowing the player with the 1 to score their pathway. Whilst all of this point scoring sounds like a spaghetti western, it culminates ultimately to a game of such great thinking that it's worth dabbling in. Songbirds is a game that is prettier than it sounds. If you were expecting some sort of X-Factor performance, the only thing performing here are the player's minds. Throughout the game, each player will be playing a card from their hand into this 5x5 grid, ensuring that the card is adjacent to previously placed ones. As each row and column fills up, the bird species with the highest total claims the point value of the berry in that row or column. As the grid is filled up, whichever card each player has left in their hand at the end of the game will score points based on the number of berries that particular bird species has collected. Whoever has supported the highest berry scoring bird wins. It's a very sweet game, indeed. On the surface, Arboretum seems like a relatively pleasant game. Its theme almost reminds you of a quiet stroll in your local park on a warm autumn's morning. However, it's not until you start playing the game that you realise that this game is incredibly arduous as well as very cutthroat. Each and every single card that you have in your hand and every move in your make has potential impact on the current state of play as well as your future end game scoring. And this is where the game gets very interesting. First of all, players are constantly thinking about whether they should play a card out into their Arboretum, thereby revealing kind of the strategy or the species they might be vying for to the other player. Or do they decide to hold a card back in their hand to try and score that particular species by the end of the game? However, they'll only get to score it if they have the highest numbered card of that species compared to the other player. And this is where the tactical, deductive and kind of bluffing element does come into play. The fact that the game provides you with perfect information. You know every single card and every single tree species that's going to appear in the deck at some point. And using that information to mentally cross off all the cards that you have in your hand and the cards that you've seen and cards that you haven't seen means that you can make better and more informed choices as the game progresses. And this is why the game is incredibly good at two players. What appears to be like a game of like set collection actually is nothing like it at all. It's more about tactically placing cards and playing cards and revealing that perfect information at the right time before your other player has solved it. And that makes Arboretum a great game for two. The choices in this game are wild. Songbirds is a fun tactical game that's a little bit more bitter than sweet. 
Every single card that you have in your opening hand matters in the game. Having a seven in your hand means that if you keep that seven to the very last turn, you can score that species and guarantee yourself that you'll get the points for that bird. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that bird is going to be the winner. You could even use a seven to ensure that the bird species that you want will score the right amount of berry points in that row or column. But it does mean that you're sacrificing it so that you can't use it later on. Don't underestimate the lower card numbers as well because those lower number cards can be used to balance things out. Just because a player plays a six or a seven doesn't mean that other bird species can't make a tie. And when there is a tie, that's when the game really shifts in a different direction. Having a tie means that the bird that's third in order will actually get those berry points. And that means the game just swings in a different direction. This is what I love about the game. The game presents you with the ultimate game dilemma. The placement of your trees in your Arboretum is very important because you're trying to create multiple pathways and you're trying to use each and every card purposefully to maximize the points and opportunities for scoring points for different species at the end of the game. For example, if you're trying to score a really high number of points, Putting species that are all the same will score you one extra point per card of the same species in that path. So this path here going three, four, five, seven will score me eight points. But then utilizing the established species to create other branching paths is also super important. These networks of point scoring methods just makes this game quite thinky. The yellow species of tree could create a pathway starting from itself all the way through the orange going one, three, four, five, and ending at six, scoring five points. And because it starts with a one, it gains one extra bonus point. Having those pathways in your arboretum is all good and all. It's like putting your garden on display for the other player to see. And this is where the game gets a bit shifty, a little bit sneaky. Because the other player can see what you've built, they can thwart your plans. They can go, you know what? This big orange pathway is something that I want to stop my opponent from being able to score. So they might hold on to the number eight card if they can acquire it. Or maybe they might hold on to the number one card so that if you do hold on to the number eight card, they can trumpet and stop you from getting eight victory points. There's one crucial area where both games differ. In Songbirds, Everyone is playing and building the same matrix and tableau. And this change really amps up the tension level, the competitiveness, and the level of interactions that players have. It almost feels like driving into a busy car park and trying to nab the best car spot first in the shopping center. Also, the fact that these berries are placed out randomly means that sometimes the high scoring berries are in the corner because you're building from the center and emanating out, kind of like birds migrating and flocking to another destination as they fly the coop, means that you're going to have to engage in some sort of forward planning and forward thinking. Cards that you want to play now, you might need to save them up later on in order to try and get your species of bird to get the maximum points possible. In addition to that, each and every single card is used twice, scoring horizontally and scoring vertically. So that seven card is gonna be really crucial for swinging that species of bird in your favor. It does really have you engaged in a cool collective puzzle as every puzzle piece you place out onto the playing field is gonna interrupt or affect the next player's decision. So in terms of theme, how does this game compare? Well, the theme in this game kind of feels almost as thematic as taking recycled paper, mashing it up into a tiny wet pulp, and then putting it through a squashing machine to then print out your own set of cards with trees on it. I guess the theme itself is kind of a little bit like window dressing in this game, but what really is thematic about Arboretum is the fact that the theme is infused in the sap of the mechanics of the game. The idea that you're out-competing the other player, that you're blocking them from getting the most important points, which is kind of representative of the sunlight that plants need in order to thrive and grow. Songbirds is very lovey-dovey in nature, if you know what I mean. and. The idea that birds are out competing or out tweeting each other to see who has the greatest dominance or the most beautiful bird voice is something that probably doesn't really emanate as clearly through the strategy and the gameplay that this game has to offer. Each card is beautifully illustrated and the cards of the same number have this really cool fairy tale like quality to them where 
there's birds that are nesting or birds that are flying and birds even talking to other birds of other suits. It's almost like the birds are representative of the players at the table communicating to each other subliminally through card plays and very quick-witted decisions. Wrapping your head around how the scoring system works in Arboretum is as complicated as understanding how foreign currency exchange works. It's actually quite hard and when I first played this game I was incredibly confused with how the numbers worked and why a 1 trumps an 8 and how the pathways kind of get connected together and I think that kind of deterred me from wanting to learn the game upon my first encounter with it and it wasn't until later on when I felt a little bit more comfortable that I realized it's not as hard and as complex as it sounds. There's purpose to all these little niggly rules that this game kind of throws at you in terms of the scoring. It means that all the cards and the values of the cards are balanced. It means that an 8 isn't always more powerful than a 1. A 1 can just simply really change the game at the end and really surprise the other players. And that's what I love about Arboretum. The scoring works well. When it comes to counting the berries, the scoring system in Songbirds is super simple. Back the right bird, have that card in your hand at the end of the game, and you win. If two players have the same species of bird card at the end of the game, whoever has the high numbered bird card wins the game. This invites for some incredible decision making. It doesn't just simply reward the bird with the most number of berry points on it. It rewards players for making the right tactical choice and then, you know, betting on that on the last turn of the game. Players at the beginning of the game are going to have a plethora of different choices and that as players play the game and place cards out, that choice is going to become more and more narrow and players are going to be rewarded for making the right tactical decisions. Seeing what other players play and seeing or predicting what other bird species the other player is going for is part of your game strategy. Knowing that the other player might be going for the bluebird means that you can kind of intervene and make that bluebird less powerful. This kind of tactical intervention really makes for a rewarding experience that makes you really want to play the game more and more times. So, which of these two games did you think was superior? Did you like the complexity of the scoring in Arboretum? Or do you like the high level of competitiveness and tension in Songbirds? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I think out of the two games, the one that I would definitely get and prefer is Songbirds, just because it's easier for non-gamers to get into, it's one that's perfect for two players and has the same level of thinkiness and taps the same beats as Arboretum, but at a much faster pace and you can get more games in with Songbirds actually. Now, if you found this video super helpful, please consider subscribing and head over to my Patreon page to support us on Patreon. And don't forget, if you want some more board game recommendations, check out the other videos on my channel. There's ones for gateway gamers as well as party games. And in addition to that, simple Euros as well. I'll leave the links in the description box below. This is Danny signing out. I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.